uh, all about lifting people through the power of the cross. We feel like that's the reason why we lift or why, why, why we exist, to lift people through the power of the cross. And man, I hope that in our time together that you have just felt God's presence. You feel the lift that comes from, from God, from worshiping with his people and hear from the preaching of, your, of God's word. You know, we accept people for who they are. And listen, we are going to challenge you to become every bit of who God wants you to be. We love you, we receive you, and we know God's got an awesome and great plan for you and for the lives of the people that you know. So lock in today. If you haven't already shared uh, this service, would you share it please on your Facebook page? Just hit that share button. And then, uh, man, let somebody who doesn't know Jesus or somebody who needs strength from God today, let let them know um, that that God is ready and available. And that can happen through simply you sharing uh, this feed. Hopefully you're a Bible reader. I hope you, hope you pick up your Bible from time to time. I would encourage you every day. If you're not an everyday reader, then just start. You know, just grab a couple days. Say, I'm going to do Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday or something like that. But just begin uh, doing that. But if you're a Bible reader, have you ever come across a verse that you just kind of struggled with? Like, like maybe you knew uh, in, your, in your mind that, yeah, I know that to be true, but sometimes it doesn't seem to play out in day-to-day life. There seems to be a disconnect um, that, that, that's happened to me. It, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a verse that messes with your theology, your idea of God, or your thoughts on humanity. And there's a verse in the book of Romans that's very popular, very familiar. But uh, for some reason, I struggle with this verse because I don't always see it play out in day to day life. Maybe my day to day life. Maybe you do. And maybe this is one of your, you know, this is one of your verses that you stand on, but it's Romans 8. 28, that's right. You probably said 28. And let, let, let me, let's read this verse. It says this. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, Christian, this is for you. You've been called according to his purpose. You've accepted Jesus. If you go into verse 29, you'll, it, it talks about salvation basically it maybe not doesn't say salvation but that's what it's talking about those of us who have accepted Christ and we're being changed into um, his likeness it says and we know that in all things how many things all things God works what for the good of those who love him God works for the good of those who love him but as a God follower life doesn't always seem good So there's my conflict. There's my wrestle, my struggle. Sometimes I wonder, because I'm a human, before I'm even a Christian, sometimes I wonder, God, are you really there? Are you there? Some of you are going to absolutely love what we're talking about today. <laughs> you're a deep thinker. Uh, you, you love to process, maybe even debate, and you're going to eat this up. But please do me a favor as I'm struggling and wrestling. Don't debate me, okay? Don't try to eat me up. You know, I appreciate mature uh, conversation and discussion. But man, don't get out there on social media and beat me up, okay? Or beat up the church, all right? Don't, don't, don't talk bad about the church out there, all right? Give me, give me the opportunity to, uh, to wrestle a little bit and to be transparent. I'm being transparent with you today, so don't kick me while I'm down, all right? I'm, I don't feel down, but I'm just, I'm just being open and real with you today. I think, that's, I think that's healthy. I also know that this subject... Uh, can be heavy for some who are hurting or who may be sick physically, mentally, emotionally. They're, all things work together for good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. But I can't get past this physical or mental or emotional issue. Please know this. If you're struggling, God sees you. Rhonda talked about that last Sunday. You are adored by the God who sees you. He loves you. He has the highest thoughts for you. He has the greatest heart towards you. He has mercy and grace and compassion towards you because that is who he is. That is who he is. Those are descriptive words of our God. It is his desire to meet you right where you are at and to strengthen you and to love you through any and all of your difficulties. Now I have all kinds of questions for God. I have all kinds of questions. I mean, ranging from, you know, did Adam and Eve have a belly button to 
You know, why would you do this or, or, or that or not do this or, or not do that or allow this or, I mean, fill in the blanks. There's just all kinds of questions that, that, that we have. You know, if God made everything, then who made God? And that's a, that's a question I've, I've had people ask me before. You know, how, how did God just speak things into existence? How did he do that? And then how did he create light and then a couple days later create the sun? I mean, I mean, doesn't that seem backwards? It, it does. If God knew man was going to sin, then why did he create him in the first place? And what about Lucifer, who was created as an angel, yet sinned against God and cannot be saved? I mean, are, 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 am I the only one that struggles with questions like this, people? <laughs> am I the only one? Is God responsible for everything that happens? If God knows what's going to happen, then why should I even try? I mean, if he's already got it, if he already knows, then what's the point, right? And why does God allow bad things to happen to good people and good things happen to bad people if Romans 8.28 is for you and me? There's a story of a, of a church from Kentucky. It was May 14th, 1988. I was a junior in high school at the time and this last Thursday was the 32nd anniversary of this, this incident that happened. There was a youth group from Kentucky on a church bus on the way back from a day at, I don't know if it was Kings Island or if it was uh, one of the great Americas at the time. And all, but they, uh, they, had, they just took their final stop. It was late at night, maybe midnight or so. They were about 100 miles from their church after a long day of kids playing on roller coasters and hanging out together and eating amusement park food. Come on, right? That's the good stuff. And uh, just enjoying friendships and developing those friendships. I'm sure just having an awesome day. Some of them probably were sunburnt. You know, some of them probably were sleeping. But they just stopped um, at their last stop to fill up the bus with gas. About 100 miles out from the church. And they all pile back onto the bus. I'm sure some of them had their Red Bulls or their Monster Drinks or whatever we drank back then. Maybe just Dr. Mountain Dew might have been the big thing um, back then. Um, and uh, they just got onto the interstate, just a few miles down the interstate, and it's late, and I'm sure the bus was quieting down as kids were dozing off and some were still eating their snacks and messing with each other. And in the oncoming lane on the highway was a car going the wrong direction, coming straight at the bus. And that bus traveling um, 55, 60 miles an hour or so was met head on by a vehicle that was driven by a drunk driver. And the, and the impact was so hard, so intense, that the car found itself under the bus, halfway under the bus, and it hit the gas tank and ignited the fuel on that tank. People woke up because of the noise and the bang, and all of a sudden there's fire, and, and uh, just chaos, pandemonium happened, and uh, people were trying to pour out of that bus. That day, 27 people headed back from a wonderful day with their church youth group died, including the youth pastor, 27. And as I think of this, I, I get a little emotional because I, I want to ask why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why do things like this have to happen? Why did this needless accident have to take place? Why did young people's lives have to be shut or cut short? Why did moms and dads have to bury their teenage kids? Why, why, did the, why did the pastor have to perform 20 plus funerals in 30 days? What a wait. His son was on that bus and thank God his son was spared. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, and I want you to know it's okay to say I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why these types of things happen. It, it's okay because God's ways are just higher than my ways. And I know that sounds so simplistic. And, and I hate the Candyland type of answers because sometimes that's how it feels. Oh, we're just playing Candyland, right? Two pinks. I get to move up double because God's ways are higher than my ways. You know, I struggle with that sometimes. And I'm not trying to mock. I'm just telling you, I'm a real person. <laughs> And I got real questions and I got real things that I, that I wonder about. Today we can even look at the news and social media and see all kinds of injustices and world issues. Shootings, 
abortions, kidnappings, and sex trafficking, homelessness, and any number of social issues that hurt, hurt ethnicities or divide humanity. And I, I, I mean, I ask why? Why? And is it okay to ask why? And yes, it is okay to wonder. It is okay to ask why. What I do know this, well, what I do know is this. Even though I may ask why, why would a youth group on the way back from a great day have an accident? I, I don't know the answer to that. But since then, I do know this. Thousands of people have heard the story and the testimonies and, uh, of, of that day and what God has done through that accident. Thousands have come to know Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. So I don't know why maybe it happened that way, why the day in and day out things get, get crazy sometimes, but I do know this, that God is always working out his plan. Always working out his plan. His goal is to save as many as he possibly can save, and he will use anything that happens to perform that and to accomplish that, because that's who he is. There's a word for God. There's a word that we use, and it's called sovereignty. The sovereignty of God. I've been hitting you with some, with some big words on um, the last several weeks. Uh, sanctification a couple weeks back when Pastor Nathan preached. Consecration after that. And today we're going to talk about God's sovereignty. This week and next we're tackling this topic of God's sovereignty and next week human responsibility. Today we're going to zero in on God's sovereignty and, and look at how this plays into who he is and into our everyday lives. We have to start with God's sovereignty and we have to understand that God is in control. He is in control. Even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. I got to hang on those promises because I don't always see it. And I don't always feel it. And I can't go on by, I can't always go by what I see or what I feel. I can't do that. I got to stand on the word of God that he is there. He is working. He is working it out for my good. I know it just doesn't make sense, but that is how it works. I say often that, that God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom to, to what we see here on earth, to, to, our, to our natural eyes and our natural mind. It's an upside down kingdom because we only get to see so much. We only get to see a little bit. Our hope is a certainty based on the truth that God is in complete control of our vast universe and that he loves each and every one of us. Can you grab that right now? Okay, hang on to that. God is in control of this universe. And he loves you. He loves every single one of us. As we discuss this topic today, it's important to have a common definition of the sovereignty of God. And I'm going to try to move quickly to get everything in. I've got about three sermons I need to preach in two weeks uh, here. So we'll end with, with, with some good stuff here. And you can take some gold nuggets you can take with you. But here's a definition of, this, definition of the sovereignty of God. We, got, we have to know that uh, God is powerful to override all authorities, all other authorities, God is powerful enough to override any other authority. Any. He has no equal opposite. Listen, get this. Would you, man, Christian, get this. Okay, the devil is not the rival to God. He's not. He is under God. Okay, he's not the equal opposite. There is no equal opposite to God because he is. He is the authority, okay? The devil is an angel that was created that fell. And he only has the power that we give him. All right? Come on, now. Come on now. I know I heard that. Come on. God has all authority and there is no authority like him. Nothing can stop what God intends to bring about. God's sovereignty, oh, I like this. God's sovereignty is his right and power to do all that he decides to do. It's his authority, his sovereignty. It's his right and his power to do whatever he wants to do, however he would like to do it. Job chapter 42, verse 2. I'm, a, I'm just going to bomb you with a bunch of verses here, okay? So those of you who are note takers and journalers, I love it when you post it online. I love seeing what you wrote down. Some of you got all these arrows and, and pictures and you know, things going, stuff blowing up and airplanes coming across. I mean, just so cool seeing what you do. But here's uh, Job 42, 2. It says, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. The oldest book of the Bible right there. And Job is saying, I know you can do anything and nothing can stop you. This is, I mean, Job is down and out and he is saying, I see who you are, God. You can do anything and nothing can stop you. In Daniel verse four uh, or chapter four, um, he does as he pleases and nothing can say to him, what are you doing or what have you done? Isn't that awesome? 
God does as he pleases and nothing can say, what are you doing or what have you done? Isaiah 46 verses 5 and 9. It's a positive way of saying this. He says, I am God and there is nothing like me. My counsel will stand. Oh, this is so good. And accomplish all my purposes. What he does, he's going to do what he does. He has the right and the power and it's all to accomplish his purpose. And his purpose is always to point Jesus to himself. To point all of us to God. All of us to Jesus. That's his purpose. He wants us to see Jesus. Uh, Ephesians 1 verse 11, it says, He works all things according to his plan, according to his will. Now I have to stop right here because some, some of us, some people listening, some of us, we don't like authority. We, we just have this rub against authority. I don't know, I don't know what, what your situation may be. Maybe uh, um, you were abused. Maybe, maybe there's some racial tension there. Maybe it's um, um, impure thoughts or motives that were put inside of you as a kid. Maybe you've been in trouble a lot. I, I don't know what it is. Folks, listen, God is an authority. He is the ruler, all right? There is nobody like him. He can do whatever he wants. And get this, this is, this is probably different than any other authority in your life. He loves you. And everything he does, according to Romans 8, 28, is to work it for your good, to accomplish his purpose in your life. Okay, that's, that's why he does what he does. Not because he's the rule maker. You know, we didn't sing that up there. We sing, we sing way maker, okay? He's not the rule maker, disciplinarian, justice is his name, all right? Yeah, I mean, we could give those to him. But God wants to be known as, known as a God of grace and mercy and love and hope and peace for you and for me. Boy, I hope you're hitting that like and that heart button. You, you better be going nuts, okay? Go, go crazy. I, I can't see those here, but the worship team's doing a good job backing me up. I appreciate that. God's sovereignty is his right and power to do all he decides to do. Folks, if you, have, if you struggle with authority, it, it, it is time to put, your, put yourself under God's authority and allow him to lead you. He's not going to be a bad taskmaster. Uh, master. He is going to lead you and guide you, walk alongside you, bless you, pick you up when you need it, empower you when you need the power. That's how he leads. John Piper, he's a pastor, author, theologian. He, he wrote, um, uh, what is the sovereignty of God? And he shares two basics of God's sovereignty. And Piper shares that God is in control of everything. And I mean everything. God is in control of everything. And that God's sovereignty is governed by his wisdom and his grace. I want to talk about these two things just real briefly in this first point here. What is God's sovereignty? Well, it's this. It's that God is in control of everything. He is. He is in control. He didn't just spin this earth. He didn't do the seven days of creation and walk away from it. Right? He didn't even, he didn't even just hang out until Jesus came, died, and rose again and transcended into heaven. He, he didn't just walk away. He is, he is here. He's involved. Christian, bring him in. Bring him into your decisions. Bring him into everything that you do. Bring him into every conversation. You know, bring him into your attitude. Bring him into your emotions. Bring him into the way you think. He wants to be involved. Give him that control and watch God do awesome things in your life and take you to the next level. God's in, sometimes uh, God being in control shows his sovereignty over seemingly random events. I, hit, I wanna, just want to hit these simple, some of these simple things. Uh, we'll get a little deeper here in a second. But in Proverbs 16, 33, it talks about dice and casting lots. We may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. So we do our part, but God determines how they fall. Uh, a couple weeks back, me and Max and Sophia were playing uh, Risk. I don't know if you play Risk. And there's just something about Risk. When you're the attacker, why can't you get the dice you need? Okay? It's like, I don't know what the deal is. And Sophia, she would roll. She'd be shaking them. She'd have her eyes closed. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, g- give me the higher number. And she'd roll. And sometimes it'd be like, yes! And she screams, yay! And other times it's like, oh! And unfortunately, she shrinked down from about a dozen countries to about five. <laughs> so the roll of the dice, where was that? You know, God's in control whether it's him saying, let's give you the six, let's give you the one, or let's see what happens. God, that's God's way. He is in control. It is his plan. Even to rolling dice and casting lots, even to voting. It's, it's, God's, it's God's design. It's his plan. He's in it. He's in control. Psalm 135, 6. Nature, the Lord does whatever pleases him. Underline that. The Lord does whatever pleases him in the heavens and on the earth, in the seas and in all the depths. Anywhere. God is in control. He does what pleases him. Matthew 8, 27. I don't have this on the screen. The winds and the seas. Remember when they were in the boat, the disciples and Jesus, and they were on their way over uh, to uh, Gennesaret. They were crossing the sea there and Jesus was going to get out. It was the first time he was over there. 
and the winds and the waves blew up and, and Jesus was asleep in the boat and the disciples woke him up and said, Jesus, we're going to drown. Why, why, how are you sleeping? What is this? And Jesus stood up, calmed the winds and the waves. Do you remember what the disciples said in that verse? In verse 27, they said, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. He's even in control of the wind and the waves. He's blowing their minds. And we're going to do a series over the summer, I think nine weeks, on miracles. Uh, last, last year we did the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew 6, 7, and 8, or 5, 6, 7. And then this year we're going, this summer we're going to do uh, chapters 8 and 9 of Matthew. And it's, there's like nine or ten miracles that Jesus does. And this is one of the sayings that we're going to hit. What kind of man is this? Who is this man? As they sing in, in the Savior, who is this man? Calms the winds, controls the sea. Matthew 10, 29. Even animals, Jesus says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. Jesus, he cares about the birds. He, he, he's in control. He knows all that's happening. And Jesus is saying, if he knows about these insignificant birds, guess what? He knows about you. He is very aware. He is sovereign and, and, and aware of what goes on in your life. In 2 Chronicles 26, uh, the nations, he's in control of the nations. Uzziah did what was pleasing in God's eyes. And his fame spread far and wide, for the Lord gave him marvelous help, and he became very powerful. Did he do it within himself? No. It says he pleased the Lord. He did what was right in God's eyes. And all things worked together for his good. And God used him for his purpose. In Proverbs 21.1, kings and leaders, the king's heart, it's like a stream of water directed by the Lord. I can't wait till next week to, to talk about like Pharaoh, okay, and how God had hardened his heart. Now, wait a minute. Is that even fair? God hardened his heart and wouldn't let the, wouldn't let the, uh, children, uh, the Hebrew children go. He wouldn't let them go. Wow, I'm excited to talk about that next week. Um, he guides it wherever he pleases. He guides the king's heart wherever he pleases. Is that enough scriptures? Well, I got a few more, sorry. Uh, Proverbs 16, 9 says this up on your screen. We can make our plans but the Lord determines our steps. He's there. He's in control. We make plans. The Lord determines the steps. Proverbs 19, 21. You can, make my, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. So we make plans. His purpose prevails. Okay, how we decide to get there, he, he's, he's probably a part of maybe saying, hey, go this way, go this way. And we tend to maybe sometimes go the other way. But his, his intent is that his purpose will prevail. Psalm 115, 3. He does all that he pleases. Our God is in the heavens and he does as he wishes. He is sovereign. He gets to make the rules. He gets to say it's my way. He gets to say this is how it's going to happen. He can give us the freedom and then he can give us the counsel and then he can lead us the way he wants us to go. It's up to him. He is in control. Are you picking up on his sovereignty? Who God is, he is in control. Folks, he's in control. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever decision you need to make, give it to him. Allow him to be in control of it. Let him steer, steer your life. It is biblical to say that nothing has such power or authority to stop what God brings, what God's plan, uh, what he wants to bring about. The other thing that Piper shared was that there's two big things to grasp about God's sovereignty. So the first thing was um, that God is in control. Then he says this, he says, the sovereignty of God is governed by his wisdom and the sovereignty of God is governed by his justice and mercy. So how does God make his decisions? If God's all powerful, if God knows it all, if God's the ruler, then how does he decide when to get involved, when, when to let us have our freedom, when to take over and when not to? Um, how, how does that happen? Well, here, first it's in the sovereignty of God that it's governed by his wisdom. Romans eleven thirty three 33 says, Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. Did you hear that? We aren't going to get it. We're just not always going to get it. His ways are higher than my ways, all right? God's foolishness is like the highest wisdom of man, okay? I mean, if somebody's super smart and super wise, that's God's foolishness. So there's, there's this gap between our understanding of what God is trying to do often and what God is really trying to do. Now, I'm not saying he, he hides, it, hides his will from us all the time, but he does want us to seek it out. Actually, it is to the glory of God to hide a thing. It is the, it is the, uh, the glory of kings to search it out and find it. Folks, that's you and me. It is to our glory to search out God's heart and what he has for us. But he governs 
his sovereignty towards us by his wisdom, not ours. That's why I can ask why, and God never would have to ask why, because he already knows. He is wise. The sovereignty of God is also governed by his justice and his mercy. Isaiah 30, 18 says this, So the Lord must wait for you to come to him so that he can show you his love and compassion. For the Lord is a faithful God, or God is just, is what it's saying. Blessed are those who wait for his help. He's got help. He wants you to wait. He, see, he's not in a hurry. He, he's waiting on you and me. He wants to give us compassion and mercy and grace. And he's, he's saying, I will wait. He's a waiting God. He's a gentleman. He'll wait for you. He'll open the door and just wait. Just wait till you see the door to, 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 to walk through. You ever, you ever seen a trapped bird? You ever had a bird trapped in your house or in kind of a breezeway area? You can open the door, but sometimes it takes that bird a little bit to figure out that's the way out. Keep, keeps hitting the window. Sometimes I think we're like that. You know, we think we may see or we want to go our own direction, but man, when we find the door that God's got open for us, man, in there is love, compassion, his wisdom, his goodness. Romans 9, 14. So uh, the sovereignty of God is governed by his justice and his mercy, his grace. Romans 9, 14. Are we saying then that God was unfair? Man, how many people think God is not fair? Sometimes I do feel that way. Like, how is that right? How? That is not okay. That's not fair. All right? So here's Paul writing in Romans 9. Are we saying then that God is unfair? Of course not. For God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anyone I choose. And I will show compassion to anyone I choose. Because God is sovereign. He gets to choose. He wants to give compassion. He wants to give mercy. And he gets to choose. Folks, draw yourself to him. He's, he's, his promises stay the same. That if you draw near to him, he will do what? Draw near to you. And you can experience his compassion and his mercy. The ultimate aim is not his justice. Okay, that's not what God is trying to get across to the world right now. Okay, COVID-19 or wars or, or plagues or whatever it might be, okay? God isn't trying to get his justice across to us, okay? God's trying to get his mercy and grace across to us. That's what he's trying to do. Can we see that? In our, in our small minds, in, 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 our, in, in our limited wisdom, can we see past thinking God is trying to punish people to man, God is trying to draw people to himself. That's his ultimate aim and it always has from the garden. When Adam and Eve sinned, what's the first thing God did? When, when he had that conversation, Adam, I'm looking for you. Where are you? Where, where you at, buddy? Why are you covered up? We have sinned. And God's like, oh, you did? Come on. He's like, man, if you read, if you read in Genesis there, chapter three, what did he do? He killed an animal sacrifice and used the skin of that animal to cover Adam and Eve. Before there was this justice, there was this mercy that he showed to them. God, folks, God is still doing that today. When we come to him and repent, you know what he does? He clothes us with forgiveness and righteousness and grace. Receive that today before, you, before, before your heart and your mind go to God's justice and receive his mercy. Now his justice is there. Be careful that you're not all grace because he is a God of grace, mercy, and justice. All right? But he's ultimately trying to lead you to his mercy. Man, I wish I could see what's on the screens, all the, all the, all the blue thumbs up and the hearts. Is that, they, is that happening? Everybody's off? Nobody's paying attention? Sometimes it feels like that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Come on, Jesus. Romans 15, 9 says that he came to give grace to the Jews and to the Gentiles for his glory. Ephesians 1, 6 says we praise God because he gave us grace through his son Jesus. And that's what we did. We just sang and worshiped him and praised him because of his grace. God can control and he is in control of everything. We may ask God, why did you or why didn't you do this or why did you or didn't you do that? Or we may think something happened by chance or by luck. But it is imperative, folks, that we remember that God rules and governs everything from his wisdom, not ours, and through his justice and his grace. Folks, God is in control. Now, it's easy to blame God for things. I'm going to go ahead and keep moving here. Easy to blame God. Get into the second sermon. 
and I'll give you half the second sermon this week and half the second sermon last week and we'll give you week three or the third sermon as well. Genesis 50, 20. I, I love this because this is the counterbalance to Romans 8, 28. I, I, I love this. We're going to get into the life of Joseph here in just a second. We're going to hit Genesis um, 38 through 50. We're, we're not going to buzz. I'll just buzz through a lot of it to give you the, the gist of the story. But Genesis 50, 20. Will you write that down? Will you get this? So Romans 8, 28. And if you have a Bible, man, in Romans 8, 28, write uh, Genesis 50, 20. And at Genesis 50, 20, will you write Romans 8, 28? Because here's, here's what this says. Remember, it's Joseph talking to his brothers. He says, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good, that many should be kept alive, that many should be saved. So here in Romans, and of course, Joseph didn't know Romans 8.28 because it hadn't been written yet, right? Paul wasn't alive. I mean, Joseph is saying, okay, all things work together for good. Here it is. My whole life and my brothers are standing before me. I'm in an elevated position. I have opportunity to bless back. Look what God did. All the things that happened in my life, he brought me to this point. Did you know God's plan from the get-go was to put Joseph in charge in Egypt? That was his plan. It just took a weird lot of weird routes to get there because humans get involved with God's plan. Do you hear that? And oh, how easy is it to blame God for the things that happen. Right? Well, if God's got this perfect plan and perfect will, why don't I just get that? Why isn't life easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? I think there's another line to that. And if it is, teach me and I'll, I'll say it next time. But humans get involved and just mess God's plan up. You think it was God's plan that Adam and Eve would sin? Now, there are people who uh, believe this, but that wasn't God's plan. God's plan is that we would live in perfect harmony with Him. If it was God's plan that Adam and Eve sinned, then that messes up everything I know about God, even his sovereignty. It messes all of it up. Free will he gives. It messes up free will, which that's what we're talking about next week, uh, human responsibility to God's sovereignty. Well, let's get back to Joseph here. God is in control. And get this one right here. But he doesn't always get his way. God is in control, but he doesn't always get his way. God doesn't always get his way. I do believe that his ultimate purpose will be carried out because I've read the rest of the book. But I don't see that God gets his way in the day in and day out of everyday lives of humanity today or in scripture. God doesn't always get his way. That's why the road goes like this for us and not just like this. Because of our flaws. Not God's, ours. Because of our way of thinking. Not God's, our ways of thinking. In the Bible, there's a record about a queen named Esther. She had the opportunity to save her people and she began to second guess getting involved. You know, it was just it was a crazy thing that a Jewish girl becomes the queen um, and uh, somebody's, what's his name? Mordecai is her uncle, right? I can't remember the, and Haman, thank you. That's my wife, my wife, 10 points. That's right, Bible quiz. Haman, or yeah, Haman, right? <laughs> Haman, Haman planned to, to, to wipe out the Jews. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to, to destroy this, this group of people. And so uh, Mordecai goes to Esther and says, man, I heard this thing's going to happen. You've got to do something. And Esther's like, I don't know. I don't know if I should. You know, the struggle that we all have, right? Should I get involved? Should I not get, what do I say? Do I start up the conversation? How deep do I go? Man, I don't feel informed enough to even, be, you know, to talk to somebody about this. And also Esther, she's going back and forth. And here's what Mordecai, her uncle says to her, folks, you need good godly people around you who can encourage you on that path that God's got for you. Because sometimes you're just walking in the thick of it and you don't see it. And that's why you need a brother or sister on the left and right. Fight club, that's what we're all about, man. We got like 40 some guys from our church graduating fight club tonight um, at 414. I'm so excited about these men. So awesome, 10 weeks with your brothers, man, fighting, moving forward and allowing your brother to help you when you can't move forward, when you can't see where you need to go, you've got somebody right next to you. And Esther had Mordecai, her uncle, Here's what it says in verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 14. Esther 4, 14. This is what Mordecai says to her. For if you remain silent at this time, okay, listen, she has the choice to remain silent. He says this, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. God's purpose will take place. Esther, it's up to you. Do you want it to go through you or not? That's the will. You have free will. God is sovereign. He's going to get the job done. Esther, do you want to be a part of God's plan? Do you want to be a part of what God has for you? 
Then he goes on, he says, but you and your father's family, they will perish. If you step outside of this, God's plan will prevail, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. God put her there. God got her there and put her in this dilemma and said, will you seek me? Will you, will you listen to me in this or will you not? Will you lean into God's wisdom or will you lean into your own fears? God was certainly in control of Esther's time. He was there and God wanted to use Esther, but it was up to her to decide whether or not she was gonna be used in her God-given position to rescue the Jewish people. I'm gonna dig more into that next week. Max and I, my son, my 14-year-old son, were talking this week about God. We went fishing and then hit Dairy Queen. Thank the Lord Dairy Queen's been open all through this. Man, ice cream, come on. Ice cream. And Max, um, he asked me this. He said, if God is big enough and if God cares, so he's saying if God is really sovereign here and if he is who, I, who, who I've heard he is, then why doesn't he just wipe out the coronavirus? Great question. I bet a lot of us have asked that. God, why? Why, why? why don't you just wipe it? Why don't you just take care of it, right? Can I share this with you? That God does not will everything that happens. But in everything that happens, God does will something. God doesn't always get his way. But even in that, God wills something from us. And I don't know why God doesn't wipe out the coronavirus, but I do know this. He is sovereign and his ultimate plan will prevail. And I have a choice. I can either fight against that the whole time that the coronavirus is you know, big on the scene and in our face. I can fight against that the whole time. Or I can say, God, what do you want me to do in this? What do you want me to do during this time? You know, I pray, God, what do you want First Assembly to do during this time? And you know, I've shared with you on our Friday updates, our weekend updates. I've said, I want us to be a strong church that can impact the community. And folks, you are awesome, okay? You are giving and you are helping us meet so many needs. Thank you. I wish, I wish you could just see all the needs that are being taken care of. Thank you. I want to be strong in this. I don't want to be a group of people that's weighed down by all the craziness that's going on, but I want to be a church that's advancing the kingdom of God and meeting people's needs. That's where we're at. Now, I know God doesn't always get his way and he doesn't always will everything that happens, but in what is happening, he is willing something. I've heard some heard some say everything happens for a reason. You've probably heard people say that. Why this happen? Well, everything happens for a reason. And it's easy and cliche to write things off, off like that. And I'm 100% down with that. Yep. Sometimes things happen because of divine intervention or divine purpose. But can I share with you this, that sometimes things happen. The reason is because of my foolishness. Everything happens for a reason. Yep. I was speeding. I got the ticket. The law said go this miles per hour. I got the ticket. Dare I blame God? <laughs> God's like, that ain't my bad. That's your bad. <laughs> that ain't me. That's you. I spilled, oh, I spilled, and my kids will remember this. I spilled, I, I'm making tea in our tea maker, putting the sugar, you know, doing all this. Yeah, we put sugar in our tea because that's the right way to drink tea. It's called sweet tea. Okay, it's, it's the Lord's drink. All right. I got the whole, whole gal, man, just got it done, man. I didn't know the dog was laying behind me in the kitchen. Was he wrong for laying there? No. Was I wrong for not looking before I took a step? No. I just, boom, and just tea, sweet tea everywhere. It was all over the place, man. Is that God's fault? Was that in his divine providence, which that's something else we could talk about, um, that, that I would do that? You know what? Maybe, maybe not, but sometimes I don't watch where I'm stepping. So I don't, I don't get all mad at God because I spilled the tea, all right? I guess that could be taken two ways, right? If you're spilling the tea this way, that is your fault. That is your problem too, all right? All right, so just be careful out there. Uh, what else? Um, and I couldn't find my shoes because I didn't put them where I usually keep them. So it made me late. And then, I had to get, then I had to break the speed limit, right? It's all those things. My foolishness is a simple reason to the, to, to the questions of why did this happen to me? Because sometimes I'm just not smart. I'm just a human being. And then other times it's God's divine provision and leading. Everything happens for a reason. Sometimes that reason is because of my wisdom. I've made A's in classes before. Surprising, I have made A's. Um, I, showed, I showed up to work on time, went above and beyond my responsibilities, got a raise and a promotion. That's happened to me before, okay? Um, I, I, I hope that God was a part of that as well. I made dinner, brought my wife some flowers, and it made her day. That was my choice, right? Could God have been in that? Sure. But I had the choice to either do that or not. Babe, it's been a while. I'm sorry. I'll get back to it. Yeah, I, oh, last Sunday. Yeah, well, it was Mother's Day. So does that count? 
It counts, thank you. Awesome, all right. Sometimes the reasons things happen are because, because of me. There are simple situations with simple, almost predictable outcomes. If I do this, then this happens. It's simple. It's not even God's sovereignty. It's, it's a law of nature that he's provided. Well, maybe in his sovereignty, he provided that law of nature. We must be careful, though. It is dangerous to attempt to offer simple cliche answers to complex questions or complex situations. You never walk into a a hospital room of of a family member that just passed away and say, well, God's going to work it all for your good, folks. Because then you miss the heart of God that has compassion and mercy on people. Now we can lead them to God's going to work all things for your good through the compassion like God has and through the mercy that God has. But in in my head, I have lots of questions. Possibly one of the best people to look at in the Bible in regards to God's sovereignty is Joseph. It's in Genesis chapter 37 through 50. It gives us the account of his entire life from when he was young till his death. Worship team, if you guys want to go ahead and come on back. I think we'll we'll close with some worship time. I think that's what we'll do. So it might extend, but you can can hop off here in just a minute. Actually, I guess you have all control. You can hop off whenever you want, but we're going to spend a little extra time in worship today. Possibly um, looking at the, the life of Joseph you know, God gave him dreams of leadership and authority. You can find this in Genesis 37 through 50. God gave him dreams of leadership and authority when he was young. And he chose to tell, tell, us, he chose to tell his family. And it made his brothers, his family members jealous. Even his parents were like, really, we're going to bow down to you one day? He's saying, ah, this is my dream. Everybody bow down to me. And his dad's like, really? Because the dad doesn't bow down to the youngest in the family. Okay, that's not the way it works. He gets, um, he gets sold by his brothers into slavery. He gets promoted to the highest rank in his master's house. Then is falsely accused of, of rape, and then uh, he's put in prison. So there's this high, low, high, low. God's got stuff for me. I'm getting sold by my brothers. All right, now I'm sold in slavery. Now I'm the top here. Now somebody lied about me. Now I'm in jail. And while he was even in jail, he did well. And God used him, and God, God honored him because his heart was set. Joseph's heart was set on God. Joseph did right, and God blessed that. He gained favor. He interprets a couple dreams uh, for some people, and, and the one that went to the king had forgotten about it. A couple years later, the king had a dream. And he said, oh, and, and, and the, uh, was it the cupbearer, I think it was, said, hey, I met this guy named Joseph, and he interpreted my dream. Here's what happened. He could probably interpret yours as well. So Joseph's brought in. He uh, uh, tells the uh, king the, the um, interpretation of the dream, and he gets promoted. This life of up and down and sideways that Joseph lived, it, it, I mean, any of us would want to avoid prison or being sold by our brothers or sisters or, 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 you know, in that conflict. And then the years of anxiety that he may be held on to. But he ends up in the palace with Pharaoh in the leadership and a famine breaks, uh, breaks out. And lo and behold, who shows up as Joseph is now a man and he's in this leadership powerful position. He is sovereign now. And he is able to say yes or no. Or you do this and you do that. And who shows up but his brothers. The ones who sold him into slavery. And they did not recognize him. But what did Joseph do? They asked him for food. And Joseph blessed them. That's what he did. He blessed them. He took care of them. Those who hurt him. Those who took his life and made it curvy and bumpy and messy. He blessed them. In his limited ability of sovereignty, he blessed them. Folks, I got to believe that God wants us to respond the same way. That God would want our hearts to be set, not in an attitude of justice, you deserve what you get, but in an attitude of mercy and grace, just as God has given mercy and grace to us. In Joseph's life, we find where sovereignty brings Romans 8, 28, full circle, God purposed to get Joseph to the White House and it may not have been the route that, that even God willed, but Romans eight twenty eight says, and we know that in all these things, God works for the good of those who love him and Joseph loved him, who have been called according to his purpose. Joseph was called by God to lead and it was God's purpose to get him where he wanted him to go and his brothers were standing before him and Joseph brings the verse in the entire Bible that spotlights God's sovereignty, which I've already shared it with you. Genesis fifty twenty. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what he is now doing, what is being done, the saving of many lives. Folks, in all things, God works for good. He does it. His word is true. 
just because you struggle with it doesn't mean it's not true. Just because I'm struggling saying, man, are you real? Is this really for me? Are you? Because it doesn't seem like it's working out for my good over here, God. It doesn't feel like it. But folks, he is sovereign and he will always be sovereign and he will always love you. A boy walked in, walked in he was learning violin and a boy walked into his teacher's um, uh, studio. And, this, and the boy walked in and he said, teacher, what's good? And the teacher put down his violin and he walked over. And he had a tuning fork and he hit it. It's like, ding. And he said, that's an A note. It was an A note yesterday. It's an A note today. And it's going to be an A, a note for a thousand years from now. And he said, that's what's good. Folks, God loves you, has compassion for you. He is sovereign. He is in control and he's involved in your life. Yesterday, today, and a thousand years from now, should, should you be around? And we will, because we will be with him in heaven. Folks, his sovereignty never ceases to exist. There is no authority that can oppose him. He's greater than any situation and circumstance in your life. And he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Can I give you a lifted home challenge before we begin to worship again? Write, pray, write. That's what I'm asking you to do this week. Write, pray, write. You journalers, write that down. Write, pray, write. Write down things you don't understand and any struggles that you might have. Sickness, hurt, relationship problems, financial troubles, mental or emotional struggles questions about COVID-19, then pray. Pray for God to show you his sovereignty in the situation. I know you want to see that. Pray to see God's sovereignty in the situation. So write down the issue, pray to God, and then write down what you hear him saying. He will speak to you. He will speak to you. Would you just close your eyes and worship? You can stand, you can kneel, you can stay seated where you're at. That's quite fine. God, thank you for your love for us. Folks, he loves you so much that he remains sovereign in every aspect of humanity. He is our power. He is our strength. He is our source. That's a big one. We can preach on that right there. He is our source for everything we need to fulfill his purpose in our lives. If we believe in his sovereignty, then we don't have to be given to fear, to worry, to anxiety. We don't have to be stuck in bitterness or unforgiveness because he is sovereign and he works all things out for our good because God works for the good of those who love him. Father, we love you and we lift you up. We honor you and praise you. Whether we're standing, whether we're seated, whether we're kneeling, we lift up our hands, we lift up our mouths. If you're at home, if you're in the car, if you're riding your bike, whatever you might be doing, man, would you just begin to praise God and thank him for his sovereignty, that he is in control, that he is involved, that you can, you can lean into him and trust him. Lord, that, that he is the way maker, that he can work miracles, that he has no equal opposite, that he, is, that he is God. That He is who He says He is. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. May, may we trust you in the process. May we lean into your will, God. Lord, may we trust your wisdom, which is so much higher than ours. God, we lift you up and bless you. We glorify your name. You are holy and you are worthy. You are mighty. Wonderful, God. Wonderful, God. Wonderful, God. You are good. You are good. You are good. Go ahead, team. Go ahead and sing Waymaker. Sing it for us today. We bless you. We worship you. We praise you. Sing the verse. You are here moving in our midst. You are here. Yes, you are. Moving in our midst. I worship you. Yes, we do. I worship you.
when it seems so dark and we can't see. God, may we never curse you. May we never, may we, may we uh, we're just going to struggle Absolutely. sometimes with doubt, but God, may we always lean back into you knowing Hallelujah. that you're making the way yes. and that your ultimate purpose is going to prevail. God, I'm going to make wrong decisions and I'm going to get outside of your will sometimes. But God, thank you for your spirit that woos me back. You're always working compassion and mercy and grace in my life. Thank you for that, God. I thank you for that. Lord, would you do that for each of us? draw us to yourself Lord even right now God I gotta believe that there's people who are who are watching and Lord who, who maybe don't know you and folks if, that, if that's you if you don't know Jesus if you don't know that compassion and that love that love of Jesus if you've never asked Jesus into your heart and received his forgiveness would you do that right now I want to encourage you I'm gonna pray a prayer and just you can just pray right after me if you want to receive him right now just pray this prayer just say dear Jesus come into my heart change my life Forgive me of my sin. Help me to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's it right there. You did it. You confessed your sins. You received Jesus, the Son of God, into your heart and into your life. I'm going to encourage you to make him the Savior of your life. Follow his will. Seek his will. In our, in our feed there, would you, uh, would you just post um, what's next? Make that comment. Or there's a link there as well. Our moderators will put that on. What's next? Would you just hit that link, what's next? Now that I prayed the prayer, I asked Jesus, what, what is next? We just want to give you some information, just some simple things, some simple steps that you can take as you move forward in your relationship with God. Folks, God loves you. He is here for you. Man, He is sovereign and has an awesome plan for your life. And sometimes we're going to bounce outside of that. But remember, He's always drawing you back because He loves you. He has compassion on you. And His end goal is always to set people free, to bring people to himself. Just receive that today. We love you and we praise God in the name of Jesus. Would you go in the power of the Holy Spirit this week? And church, would you be a group of people? Can we be a people that lift people through the power of the cross?